crews in Brisbane just smashed a city record, digging a hole 50 metres straight down into the earth, deep enough to swallow a 15-storey building. This isn't just a hole, it's the gateway to the underworld for the massive Cross River Rail project, a new underwater metro featuring 5.9 kilometres of twin tunnels. To carve this new world, two 1,350-ton mechanical monsters, each longer than a soccer field, are grinding their way through the city's foundations and directly under the immense pressure of the Brisbane River, 42 metres below the surface. But how do you steer these giants through a geological nightmare of fractured, volcanic rock that could crumble without warning? To understand this monumental project, we have to go back in time. For over 100 years, Brisbane has had a critical flaw built into its very heart. The city's train network was split in two by the Brisbane River, connected by only one inner-city rail bridge, the Merivale Bridge. Opened in 1978, this single bridge became a dangerous choke point. By 2016, it was running out of capacity, meaning a single delay on one side of the river could cause a domino effect, grinding the entire region's transport system to a halt. The idea for a second crossing wasn't new. It was first proposed way back in 1885, but for decades, the plan was repeatedly shut down. It was blocked by political battles, a lack of funding, and even fierce opposition from South Brisbane merchants who were afraid a direct link to the city centre would hurt their businesses. The Cross River Rail isn't just a construction project, it's the final answer to a problem a century in the making. But how do you solve a 100-year-old problem in a modern, crowded city? You start by building it twice. Before a single shovel hit the dirt, the entire Cross River Rail was built in a virtual world. Learning from the challenges faced by London's similar Crossrail project, the Brisbane team created a massive, incredibly detailed 3D model of the entire 10.2-kilometre line. A digital twin. This wasn't just a simple computer drawing. They combined every piece of data from every contractor into one master model. They used architectural plans, geological surveys, and city maps to create a perfect digital replica of the tunnels, stations, and the city above and below them. Then, they did something amazing. They loaded this entire model into the Unreal Engine, a powerful tool used to create video games. This allowed engineers and planners to put on a virtual reality headset and literally walk through the project. They could stand on a virtual station platform, ride an escalator down into a cavern, and fly through the tunnels. This digital playground was a deadly serious tool. It allowed them to spot clashes and design flaws that would have been disastrous and incredibly expensive to fix in the real world. They could see where a pipe might hit a steel beam, or where a tunnel might come too close to a building's foundation. The first version of Cross River Rail was built with pixels and code, allowing them to make all the mistakes virtually, so they could get it perfect in reality. But to bring this digital dream to life, they would need some of the biggest and most powerful machines on the planet. Digging a 5.9 kilometer long twin tunnel under a city is a tale of two different kinds of machines, the Titans and the Artists. The Titans of this project were two gigantic tunnel boring machines, or TBMs. These drills were 165 meter long mobile factories, longer than a professional soccer field. Traditionally, TBMs are named after women for good luck, and these were called Else and Merle. Each one weighed an incredible 1,350 tons, as much as eight jumbo jets, and was pushed forward by a spinning cutter head over seven meters wide. Working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, these mechanical behemoths chewed through the earth, moving forward up to 30 meters every day. As they dug, they also built the tunnel, using a giant mechanical arm to place massive, curved concrete segments that locked together to form a waterproof ring. But where the TBMs were built for the long, straight run, the artists were needed for the delicate work. These were the roadheaders, smaller 115-ton machines that looked like something out of a science fiction movie. Instead of a giant cutter head, they have a smaller, rotating cutting head on an articulated arm studded with tough metal picks. This allowed them to operate like giant sculptors, carefully and precisely carving out the enormous, complex shapes of the underground station caverns, spaces far too intricate for a TBM. 
They moved much more slowly, excavating just one to five meters a day, but their precision was essential for creating the grand, cathedral-like spaces that would become the new stations. Together, these two types of machines would excavate over 400,000 cubic meters of rock and soil. That's enough spoil to completely fill the Gabba, Brisbane's largest sports stadium. The excavation for just one station, Albert Street, produced enough rock to fill 19 Olympic-sized swimming pools. As the TBMs pushed forward, they left behind a perfectly formed tunnel, lined with around 25,000 concrete segments, each weighing 4.2 tons, the same as a large African elephant. But the journey wasn't through simple dirt, it was through a geological nightmare. Deep beneath Brisbane lies a unique type of rock called the Brisbane Tuff. Formed from volcanic ash that blasted out of a volcano millions of years ago, it's incredibly unpredictable. In some places, it's as hard as concrete, but in others, it's fractured, weak, and full of cracks and joints. Tunneling through this is incredibly dangerous. You could be grinding through solid rock one minute and hit a weak, crumbly zone the next, risking a collapse. The ground at the Gabba station site was described as heavily fractured. To combat this, engineers were constantly drilling ahead of the TBMs, taking core samples to get a picture of the rock they were about to hit. This allowed them to adjust the speed and pressure of the TBM to match the conditions, ensuring a safe passage through the treacherous ground. Then came the ultimate challenge, tunneling directly under the Brisbane River. At this point, the tunnels are about 42 meters below the riverbed, where the water pressure is immense. A single leak could be catastrophic. This part of the operation was one of the most technically demanding of the entire project. The TBMs are designed to handle this pressure. The front of the machine is sealed and pressurized to match the pressure of the water and earth outside, creating a stable environment for the machine to work in. As the cutter head grinds away the rock, the machine immediately installs the permanent tunnel lining behind it. The 4.2-ton concrete segments are fitted with special rubber gaskets that are compressed as the segments are locked into place, creating a perfect watertight seal. In essence, the TBMs built a giant concrete submarine, piece by piece, right under the riverbed, creating a passage that will stay dry for over a hundred years. While the tunnels themselves are an incredible feat, what they connect is just as impressive. Four vast new underground cathedrals. The scale of the new stations is hard to comprehend. To build the Albert Street station, crews had to excavate a hole 50 meters deep. This shattered the previous record for the deepest hole ever dug in Brisbane, which was just 26 meters. These enormous caverns, some up to 290 meters long, were carved out by the precise work of the road headers. But these stations were designed to be more than just holes in the ground. The architects wanted to create spaces that felt uniquely Brisbane. Instead of the generic, curved ceilings you see in many subways around the world, the designs are inspired by the iconic Queenslander veranda, with high angled ceilings and exposed rafters that create a sense of openness. Huge shafts and skylights were designed to let natural sunlight pour deep underground, while the street-level entrances are open and airy to take advantage of natural breezes, a perfect fit for the city's subtropical climate. These stations will also be home to 14 major artworks by some of Queensland's most famous indigenous artists, turning these transport hubs into cultural landmarks. Each of the four stations is a destination in itself. Bogo Road, about 19 metres deep, will become the city's second busiest transport hub, connecting trains to buses and serving a major health and science precinct. Gabba, with platforms 27 metres down, is the stadium station, built to handle massive crowds for sporting events at the Gabba. Albert Street, the deepest with platforms 31 metres underground, is the first new station in the city centre in over 120 years. And finally, Roma Street, with platforms also 27 metres deep, is set to become Brisbane's Grand Central the state's most important interchange, connecting suburban trains, regional lines, and interstate services all in one place. But this city-changing vision has come at a very steep price. This project has been the subject of intense debate, largely because of its cost and timeline. 
the original budget promised back in 2017 was $5.4 billion, with trains running by 2024. Today, the official cost has soared to over $19 billion, and the first passengers won't be able to ride until 2029. The reasons for this massive change are complex. The new figure is said to be more complete, including billions for future maintenance, contractor claims, and associated works that weren't in the original headline number. The project also lost more than 140 days to industrial action. But one of the biggest reasons for the delay is the sheer complexity of the final step. Installing and testing a brand new, state-of-the-art digital signaling system, not just for the new tunnels, but across the entire existing rail network. The physical construction, while massive, is only part of the puzzle. Making it all work together digitally is a challenge of its own. Cross River Rail is a fundamental re-engineering of an entire city's transportation network. It's a project of breathtaking scale, built to solve a problem that threatened to bring Brisbane to a halt. While the final cost and completion date have been subjects of intense debate, the incredible engineering achievements taking shape deep beneath the city are undeniable. If you enjoyed this deep dive into one of Australia's most ambitious mega-builds, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the Ultimate Mega Builds channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss our next epic engineering video. What do you think is the massive price tag worth it for this city-shaping project? Let us know in the comments below.